working with this sketch here. It's got the three photos and the three Christmas trees or evergreen trees. And it is from Citrus Twist Kits. Um, I am on their blog on December 17th, 2023, depending when you're watching this video. So if you want to check out uh, more still shots, feel free to do that on their blog or on my Instagram page. But for right now, this is the inspiration of the project that I want to do. And I'm thinking this would be a great page to do um, uh, trimming the tree. And I have some pictures of our decorated tree. I might have to reprint these for size, but right now this is, I believe, um, about two and a quarter inches by four inches. So the larger one there it might need to be a little smaller. And then each year I get each of my kids an ornament that sort of represents some of their interests for that year. And last year, my son got a hedgehog for his birthday, and then my daughter always likes sloths, so we did that one. Anyway, so that's sort of what I'm thinking. Now, what I did for the trees is I went to my silhouette, and I pulled up some older Citrus Twist cut files. Um, these are two different. You might not be able to see on camera, but let's pull these off while I'm talking. So I went back to, I believe, 2019 and 2020 to get these different um, shapes of trees. My thought is I will back two of them with some of the paper from the 2023 kit. And then the other one, I am going to put some snow marker on. Hopefully, we'll see to make it kind of a flock looking. That's the plan at least, we will see. Now, I have kind of a love-hate with relationship with my silhouette. I love what it can do, but I do not like how it always is temperamental for me. I am sure it is user error and I am putting too much blame on the machine, but it does bug me sometimes. So, what you saw, me doing there was I was actually pulling, instead of pulling the cut file up, and sometimes it can rip, I learned somewhere along the road to try to pull the mat up. And I sometimes do get a better um, release. So what I am gonna do, I'm gonna either speed this up and Cut some of it just so you don't have to watch me pull all this out but I need to be careful because this is a very delicate cut file and I do not want to rip in fact I'm already starting to so I want to be very slow and methodical about this and I will put you on fast forward and narrate any tips that I have while I'm doing it so you may have figured out before I did that that last attempt at cutting those trees was not going to work the trees were stuck too much into the background paper and come to find out my settings on my silhouette were not optimal. I needed to increase my blade depth, slow down my speed, and that was gonna give me a better cut. So now you can see that I actually have three trees cut. Two are the same design while one is slightly different. I am going to now back two of the larger cut files in just a very neutral color from the Oh What Fun kit from Citrus Twist. I'm using a fine tip point on a glue bottle to just put dots of glue around the larger portions of this cut file and then adhere it to a large piece of paper from the kit. I put an acrylic block on top of it so it can help adhere the cut file down to the paper before I cut it. And then I'm just repeating this with the other cut file and paper that I wanna use for a backing. Now, what I'm gonna do is while these are still somewhat wet, while the glue is still somewhat wet, I am going to cut them out. Now, it's probably hard to see in this video, but my scissors are slightly angled, so I am underneath the white portion of the cut file. 
and this allows me to cut a, just slightly underneath so I don't have black paper coming to the very, very edge of the cut file, which you might be able to see in the final project. So my recommendation is while the glue is still slightly um, wet to do your cutting so um, you can get your scissors underneath the cut file. If you wait until the glue is hard and the paper is hard from the glue, it is harder to get your scissors underneath the cut file. And then you end up cutting just right at the edge, which then some of your paper might show on your final layout. So these actually are pretty easy to cut because they're just straight lines. Um, it's not too intricate because we're not going into the intricate part of the cut file. So this is how I'm backing the two larger files. And I decided with this layout, I am going to do black and white and gray for most of the layout. And then my photos are gonna be the pop of color that I need. I end up changing the design a little bit as I go through. Now you'll notice here, I was starting with the bottom, sort of the ground or the, the carpet um, that my trees are gonna lay on. I wanted this gingham pattern and I cut it wrong. I didn't measure it correctly and um, needed to piece two pieces together. Now, sometimes this happens um, and I have to say that this layout, I had a lot of simple errors like this where I just wasn't paying attention and did things like this. But because I was able to line up the grid on this very carefully, you cannot tell that it's pieced together at all. And so I was really lucky about that because I only had one piece of paper. So it worked out fine. Now, my original intent was to use the snow flock pen that I have and use it to make um, what appeared like snow on this center tree. Now you can see over to the right, the pen had, um, the snow flock had kind of a yellow tint to it. And on this very crisp white layout, you really noticed the yellow tint to that snow. So right here, I'm trying it again. I had colored in the stars with a red um, Tombow, yeah, Tombow marker, uh, water base pen. I had done it originally with gold, but I thought the red would be more bold. So I had a several cut files that didn't work. And so I, I just tried the flock pen and I've used it on to make whipped cream on cards for coffee and hot cocoa. And I loved it. But again, the yellow tint didn't work. So here I pulled out some of my uh, picket fence paper glaze. This one happens to be Arctic Fox. Now, usually I don't use glaze to paint like this, but I wanted a chunky look like it was snow. And this particular glaze, not only was it white, but it had some sparkle in it. So I do by just using a thin paintbrush, I am just dabbing this glaze onto the thicker portions of this cut file. And I do get a very chunky and sparkly look and it's exactly what I wanted for this page. So um, where it is not applied very deep or very thick, I am just adding more texture with more paste, just kind of globbing it on a little bit. And then if it's too much, then I'll just spread it out a little bit. So this ended up working great and was not my original intention for the project, but I love it. And I highly recommend it for a small cut file like this to get a snow flocked look. Now, um, So now um, I have finished filling in these stars with the red marker. 
And now I need a title on my page. So there's this sticker that says Merry Christmas. And because I'm decided to pull out the red and make this a primary colored layout with pops of red, I back this sticker, this Merry Christmas sticker with red cardstock. The red cardstock's from my stash. And I also add one of the red bows from the Oh What Fun kit. After spending so much time cutting and backing these trees and painting the one, I decided I am not going to cover it up with the approximately two by four inch Christmas tree photo. I'm going to change this layout to be just about the ornaments that I give my kids and that way I can kind of put them underneath the smaller tree and really make the trees stand out in this uh, project. The original sketch had a place for journaling but again I don't want to cover up my tree so what I did is I pulled out the back side of some pocket cards that I had on the previous layout. I noticed when the album was on my desk that the tree card, the back of the um, one of the cards had these black and gray trees and it went perfect with the cut files and the way I had backed them. So I am not actually using any new cards. I'm just using the back of a previous layout. The only issue is that the bottom card has blue um, stars and that's not going to work with my black, gray, and red. So I end up cutting out one of the word phrase strips that has white and red letters. And now I'm just playing around with all of the embellishments in the kit to try to find some pops of red that I can use for embellishments on these cards so I can make both sides of this layout now look cohesive. And I spend a lot of time, I, I think I pretty much go through every embellishment piece in the pack um, trying to find the right one. Now this pink strip fit perfectly, but I didn't want to pull in the pink, even though it had the red stars. So I just spend more time doing this. Now I decide to back my pictures with some red cardstock so it kind of mimics the title up at the top and also pulls in more of the red. You'll actually notice I switched out my pictures. The pictures I had started with were from last year because I hadn't given my kids their new ornaments for this year. But by the time I got to this part of the layout, I had given them their ornaments. So I switched out the pictures. My daughter got an ornament of books because she is really into studying. She's a really good student and she actually just really loves studying. I mean, I can't, can't complain about that. And then my son got a barbell weight. He's really into going to the gym and, and lifting weights right now. So those were the ornaments for 2023. So I was putting some very, very small foam squares on the back of my flocked tree. And this is just to give it some dimension. You know, it is white on white, and so it blends into the background a little bit. And by giving it a little bit of dimension, it gives a little bit of shadow, and so it looks more prominent on the page. And after all the work I did on it, I want it to be as prominent as I can make it. So that worked out good. I am now putting just the finishing touches on this project. Um, this right side of the page is pretty much done. In fact, actually it is done. And then I'm just going to spend a little bit of time on the left two cards and putting them together. The top one, as you see it, I just need to adhere the word, word phrase strip and the flower. At the bottom, I end up taking a uh, white pen because even though the word phrase strip of Oh What Fun is the exact same size as the blue strip that's printed on the card, when I pop it up on foam dots 
at the right angle you can see some of the blue underneath. So what I end up doing, and you'll see this in just a minute, is I take a white Posca paint pen and I just paint the edges of the blue strip white. Not the whole thing, just the edges. So if at the right angle you um, are looking at the page, you're gonna see white and not blue. And you'll see that in just a second. Um, otherwise, if you have any questions or comments about how this came together, please leave me a comment below. I would be happy to get back to you. And if you like and subscribe, if you like what you saw, please subscribe to my channel. I would really appreciate that. Um, feel free to check out the Citrus Trist blog um, as well as my blog or my Instagram for more still shots. There will be a few at the end of this. Um, and I would love to see you in the next video. Have a great day and I hope you get some crafting time in later today. Bye!